Welcome to the Nursing Assistant Training Program. You are about to embark on a very exciting career. Hi, I'm Kathy Gatrust, and I'm a nursing instructor in community health. This training program will teach you how to perform the many responsibilities of being a nursing assistant. This first videotape that you're watching focuses on your specific role and functions as a nursing assistant within the health care system. This health care system is a challenging, ever-changing environment where care to individuals in need is delivered. Some factors are affecting the health care environment today. We have an ever-increasingly older population that requires more and more attention. There is an explosion in medical advances and technology available. There are new government regulations, such as how to care for blood and body fluids that must be uh, taken into consideration. And the skyrocketing cost of health care is no surprise to any of us. We've also heard about the need for health care reform for delivery of care in this new millennium. Care to patients is delivered in a variety of settings. Some are in hospitals, some are in long-term care facilities, such as a nursing home, some care is provided to patients in clinics, and some care is provided in the home through the assistance of home health agencies. In all of these different situations, Health care providers are expected to deliver high quality, compassionate care in the most cost effective manner possible. Each health care provider must do everything possible to avoid waste and keep the costs down. The health care team is a group of people that are involved in caring for someone's health needs. This person who has the health need is the most important member of the health care team and has input in planning and implementation of the care that they receive. That person requiring health a need called the patient in some settings, called the client in others, and still in other settings is called a resident. Some common settings and the specific names are displayed on the screen. During the course of the training program, you will hear speakers refer to the person needing health care by each of these different terms. It can be somewhat confusing, but your specific work site will let you know which term is most commonly used in that facility. Besides the patient, the team includes many other people. Examples include a physician, a registered nurse, a licensed practical nurse, a unit secretary, the nursing assistant, a respiratory therapist, a chaplain, and many, many more. As the nursing assistant, you are part of that health care team, and everyone, including you, on the team must understand the importance of teamwork. Each of us in the healthcare team must know exactly what our job descriptions are and the expectations to carry them out. Everyone on the healthcare team needs to be able to do their job to the best of their ability in a spirit of cooperation. You will be working immediately under the supervision of a registered nurse and you will be working cooperatively with others on the healthcare team. There are many different organizational structures and lines of authority in various facilities. On the screen you will see an example of a commonly used one that you may find in your facility. Notice there that you, the nursing assistant, along with the unit secretary and patient care technician will be answering to a staff nurse. Many names, nursing assistant, nurse aide, nursing attendant, a home health aide, 
and orderly are used when referring to a health care worker who will be carrying out the basic bedside functions. Remember, the nurse recognizes the nursing assistant as an extremely valuable worker. Look at this immediate supervisor as someone that can help you learn and understand your job to the best of your ability. The jobs will vary uh, for you, the nursing assistant. Different facilities have nursing assistants work a little bit differently. The key to success in your new role is to always discuss your assignment, your duties, and any questions that you might have with the nurse with whom you're working before starting patient care each day and frequently throughout the shift. Clear and frequent communication with the nurse with whom you're working is essential. Sometimes a staff conference is also helpful with other care uh, providers. In 1987, a federal law was passed which regulated the education and certification of nursing assistants. This law is called the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, or more commonly referred to as OBRA. Under this law, nursing assistants working in health care facilities are required to complete an approved nursing assistant training program. This program that you are currently taking is certified by the Wisconsin Department of Health and Family Services as meeting the OBRA requirement. Once certified as a nursing assistant, you also must complete a minimum of 12 hours of continuing education per year. Your work site will help meet that requirement by providing educational programs ongoingly for you. The OBRA regulations are important because it gives nursing assistants recognition through certification. It also helps define the scope of nursing assistant practice. It assures the uniformity of care that nursing assistants give and it also promotes an educational standard. The duties and functions of a nursing assistant require that you will be working directly with patients, giving physical care and emotional support. On the screen, you will see tasks that are commonly assigned to nursing assistants. One of them is assistance with patient assessment and care planning another assisting the patients in meeting nutritional needs, another assisting patients with their mobility, a fourth assisting patients with personal hygiene and grooming, and another assisting in promoting patient safety and environmental safety. There are many other tasks that you will be asked to do. This is just a short list of what that might look like. Remember, though, that not all health care facilities assign the same tasks to nursing assistants. The nurse that you will be reporting to will discuss those specific responsibilities with you. Not everyone makes a good nursing assistant. It requires a special person, someone who enjoys helping others and taking pride in themselves and are willing to learn new skills. Nursing assistants see the patients the most. That means you will have a chance to hear and see things that others don't. By reporting these observations to the nurse, you will be providing valuable information. A couple of examples that come to mind might be you might notice that uh, area of one of your patient's feet is reddened today. Or you might notice that a patient is not talking today when they have had no difficulty talking in previous times that you've been caring for them. This information 
is valuable and these insights might indicate that a change in p the patient's condition is occurring and prompt attention is needed. Competent caring nursing assistants are a valuable contribution and provide comfort and support and safety. What kind of a person makes for a good nursing assistant? Certain traits, attitudes, and habits have been observed in people that have been very successful in the role of a nursing assistant. The first is that individual has good communication skills. Fully informing the nurse about your interactions and care provided to a patient is very important, along with communicating effectively with other members on the health care team. Cooperating with others is another item that is necessary to be a successful nursing assistant. Doing your best to help the health care team succeed by helping each other. Dedication and dependability, extremely important traits. The health care team relies on your ability to report to duty on time and complete your assignment completely, carefully, and thoroughly. Confidentiality is another must to be successful as a nursing assistant. You may never discuss any information about a patient with anyone that is not directly involved in that patient's care. This includes others that you may be working with in uh, your facility, as well as family and friends and acquaintances outside of that facility. Honesty and trustworthiness are also essential for being successful as a nursing assistant. You are being trusted to provide important information regarding the care of many patients. Honesty is required for reporting vital signs, which might be the temperature, pulse, respiration of a patient, to do so accurately to provide honest uh, information regarding the actual care that you provided to individuals, and other information that's essential for quality care. Consideration and patience are also characteristics that are essential to be successful as a nursing assistant. Each person that you care for is unique. Most of them are not feeling very well. Some need more time, assistance, and encouragement than others do. Nursing assistants can show empathy by being eager to serve those people and providing that care utilizing a gentle touch. Your attitude on the job is perhaps the most important single characteristic that you bring to the job. A positive attitude reflects courtesy, understanding, and emotional control. If you consider how much more we enjoy people who are enthusiastic, friendly, and cheerful, you can see how much more effective you will be with a positive attitude. Good personal grooming is also essential for being a nursing assistant because the nursing assistant works in close contact with patients. And patients believe that the healthcare environment is the cleanest environment in the world. Here are some things for you to remember about cleanliness and your appearance. You need to dress properly and neatly on the job. Follow the dress code that will have been laid out by the work site where you will be. How you dress makes a statement about how you feel about yourself and others. Use good personal hygiene. That means your hair needs to be clean, off your shoulder, and away from your face. And bathing or showering needs to be done on a daily basis. 
try to be completely free of any odors. That means no perfume or scented sprays should be used because patients when they're ill may find odors offensive. Nails should be short and should be clean. Only clear nail polish is allowed and that nail polish may not have any chips in it because that is an opportunity for infection and germs to harbor. Eat a well-balanced diet every day. Get plenty of sleep. Generally, seven to nine hours of sleep is required to be alert at work. Clean clothes need to be worn each day. Daily washing of those clothes is required to prevent the spread of germs. Never wear jewelry that is large, dangling earrings, bracelets, or pendants because it can be a safety hazard when working with patients. Always wear your name pin so that you can be clearly identified as a nursing assistant. A wristwatch is required with a second hand because you will need to have that in assessing the patient's pulse and respiration. Also, carry a pen and pad for note taking and you can keep it in your uh, clothing. Remember how you look reflects the pride that you have in yourself and the work that you do. If you are well groomed, and have good personal habits, patients are going to feel an increased sense of security and confidence in your ability to care for them. Your work as a nursing assistant is physically and emotionally demanding because you give so much of yourself to those in care. You are working with people consistently who are not feeling very well. This can be extremely stressful. Burnout is a term that means total mental and emotional exhaustion. Burnout is a fairly common problem with people who work in health care. You can reduce the stress that leads to this burnout by balancing your work with rest and relaxation. Some suggestions that have worked for other health care workers to prevent burnout are, you should talk with your immediate supervisor or request a team conference with others that you work with to discuss problems that you might be having with them on the job. Exercise physically at least three times a week, 30 minutes or more each time. Activities that increase the heart rate are best. Lots of research is now demonstrating the value of exercise for not only physical well-being, but mental well-being as well. Devote time to your favorite hobbies. Listen to music that's soothing and relaxing. Talk with understanding family and friends. Many times they can provide you with a listening ear. Don't forget about the importance of humor. Watching and listening to comical movies can help us put all of our problems in better perspective. Reading, meditation, and prayer can also help resolve problems causing stress and can lead to inner peace. Avoid people and situations as much as possible that can increase the stress that you're experiencing. Some people drink alcohol to excess, others use street drugs, or have other serious addictions. If you or loved ones uh, around you are having problems, talk to your instructor. or to someone else that you trust because there are numerous community resources available for individuals that are desiring help and the support to make these changes. 
Now you are ready to start to learn about all of the responsibilities of being a nursing assistant. You will be taught about many different kinds of tasks. Before any of these tasks are started, and each time after they have been completed, there are certain actions that must be followed. Please watch as these actions are discussed and good luck to you all in your new careers. The first section contains types of procedures that you follow during any interaction with a resident. Read care plan carefully and select tasks that need to be done at this time for the resident. Gather needed equipment and supplies as this will improve efficiency of your work and ensures you do not have to leave the room. Knock on the resident's door and pause a few seconds before entering. By knocking before entering, you are showing respect for the resident's right to privacy. Introduce yourself to the resident. My name is Kim and I'm going to be your nurse's assistant today. I need to look at your name tag and make sure... By saying this, the resident will know who is giving care. Always wear your name pin so that if the resident forgets your name, he can readily read your name tag. When working with the aged, remember to speak clearly, often in short, simple sentences, and look directly at the resident when speaking, as residents often have hearing loss. Identify the resident by checking the identification bracelet or name on bed. This is a way to ensure that you are caring for the right resident. It is very easy to get residents mixed up, especially if it is a double room. Hi, Marie, I'm back. Call resident by name. In a long-term care facility, many residents prefer to be called by their first name. Talk to family members and listen to what they have to say. Prior to caring for the resident, you can direct them to a place to wait. Explain to the resident what you are going to do and how the resident can assist. By doing this, you inform the resident of what is going to be done and what is expected. This gives the resident an opportunity to get information about the procedure. The tasks an NA can do for residents vary greatly, and the resident will assist more if she knows what you plan on doing. Provide privacy by closing the door, privacy screen, and window covering. All three should be closed even if the resident is alone in the room. Wash your hands in the sink. Majorities of long-term care facilities have sinks in the room that make it user-friendly for washing hands. Apply gloves if contact with body fluids is likely. Raise the bed to a comfortable working height as this will prevent back strain and injury caused by bending at the waist. Check to make sure the resident is in good alignment. Two reasons for this being, all body systems function better when the body is correctly aligned. The resident is also more comfortable when the body is in good alignment. Place the resident's call light and needed personal items within easy reach. Return the bed to the lowest horizontal height. Tell the resident you are leaving, especially the vision impaired resident. Open the privacy curtain, screen, and window covering. Report any unusual observations, as the nurse may need to assess the resident's condition if any abnormalities are noted. The nursing assistant is one of the few individuals that spend any length of time with a resident and is often the first one to pick up something abnormal, in other words, garbled speech, answering questions inappropriately, or reddened area on coccyx. Document on the flow chart tasks that you have completed. Remember, if it is not charted, others think it was not done. This will provide a legal record of what has been done for other members of the interdisciplinary team.